I can fully understand if you are reluctant to watch this video, particularly if you are prone to ophidiophobia, which of course is a fear of snakes. Fortunately, I don't suffer from that problem. In fact, I had a pet carpet snake for quite a while when I lived in the country. Uh, but nevertheless, snakes should always be treated with caution and respect. And notwithstanding all of that, snakes are a fascinating creature, varied in colour, size and the texture of their skin. So is it any wonder that some potters have chosen as a decoration or an added embellishment to their pots, which you will see later. And, and as in all my videos, I like to relate the historic use of the creature I am featuring and dwell for a short time on the mythology and its influence on the creative skills of the potter over what seems to be a great span of time. For example, take the story of the well-known myth about Medusa. Medusa was seduced by Neptune in the temple to Minerva, and in revenge, Minerva turned Medusa's beautiful head of hair into snakes. She was both mortal and had the ability to turn men into stones. And this clever potter has uh, created this lovely Medusa head, sculptured in clay in the unfired state. And here we see one putting the finishing touches on a Medusa head sculpture. These next two sculptures are colourful Medusa heads from Italian potteries. And this is a lovely one done in a turquoise coloured ceramic clay body. And here is a different approach, a Medusa head pot by Potter Erica Rea. The Minoan civilization of Crete revered the snake goddess. She was the goddess of fertility and sexuality. Her temples were decorated with serpentine motifs. This is a Mexican tree of life candelabra, featuring, among other things, the serpent. The serpent, which represented the devil, enticed them to eat the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge or life, and as punishment, God banished them from paradise. I made several of these in my pottery career in glazed form and also in terracotta. The one on the right was acquired by the Grafton Regional Gallery when I did an exhibition there in 1999. Now let's examine some more artefacts from antiquity with reference to the use of snake motifs. Here are two lovely Egyptian faience, serpent amulets or lucky charms. The use of the word faience should not be confused with the French meaning which describes tin glazed earthenware. But Egyptian faience was a type of alkaline clay body infused with copper and when fired resulted in blue and green hues. Snakes held symbolic significance in ancient Egypt, often representing both danger and protection. In early South American and Central American civilizations, snakes represented several things. In the early Colima Mexican culture, snakes played an important role. Because of their close association to the earth, they represented origin, renewal and regeneration, but could also be associated with death. On the left is an ancient clay beaker about 4000 BC, excavated in Susa, Mesopotamia and on the right, an American Petawaba Indian burnished terracotta pot with the black snake added. This is a Chinese Sankai snake sculpture. Sankai meaning a decoration on earthenware in three colors, brown, green, and creamy white. This is an eight-sided porcelain box with a snake and lid. 
And these are Song Dynasty snake pots with a distinctive crackle glaze, which, use, which is usually on a buff downware body. The crackle glaze was, a valued, was valued at an ascetic level. This Hellenistic Greek vase shows a snake on the handle, and this pot is decorated with a picture of Hercules slaying the Lernian Hydra, a multi-headed serpent, and this is another depiction of the same theme. And now we move on to more recent times, beginning with these plates, decorated by Bernard Palissy, a French potter who specialised in decorating his earthenware pieces with snakes and other creatures, frogs, lizards, fish and insects, back in about 1560. On the left is a well-known Minton Majolica teapot, the vulture and snake, dated 1872, and on the right is a teapot, also by Bernard Palissy, with snake spout and handle. The potter Samuel Alcock has entwined this Majolica picture with a snake in 1875, and you must admit that this is a very unusual underglazed coloured pottery pipe by Richard Pratt of a snake devouring head somewhere about the middle of the 19th century. It seems that making handles for pots out of snakes was very popular from quite early times. Take a look at these. And of course, these snake handles were all made by rolling out coils of clay, shaping them into snake forms, and then adding them as handles. Maybe dancing with snakes may have been a popular pastime back in the Art Nouveau period, but it certainly produced some delightful figurines, such as these ones. These outstanding-looking salt-glazed stoneware jugs had the rather obvious name of rattlesnake jugs and were made by Wallace and Cornwall Kirkpatrick at the Anapotries in Illinois about 1870 to 1880. They were also called temperance jugs as they were meant to deter men from consuming too much of the local whiskey. I wonder how successful that was. And these are more contemporary jugs, the rattlesnake of course, being the preferred reptile. And now for some straight out sculptured serpents. A technical point to note here is that anything made in clay should be no more than a couple of centimetres in thickness. Otherwise, it risks damage in the firing caused by trapped air or gases unable to escape. So I would think that all of these sculptures would be hollowed out for this reason. Just bear that in mind.
And now it's time to look at some functional wares with painted or modelled snake decoration or enhancement, if you can call it that. I think you'd really need to be an ophiophilist, that's a snake lover, to enjoy drinking your coffee out of these little mugs. Here we have a coffee pot and a teapot with snake enhancement and another delightful snake teapot. A remarkable vase by the iconic Hungarian pottery Zolné. On the left is an Art Nouveau vase from Paris and another many, very menacing looking whiskey jug there on the right. A lovely vase by Olivia Dominquez, uh, a sculpture by Beth Azaro, and a Medusa head vase. And now for something Australian, a little brown snake with his eye on a kookaburra on this flower tub. Some Australian Aboriginal pottery work which depicts the mythology of the rainbow serpent. A large snake platter by yours truly. And to finish is a possible product of nightmares, a human skull with snake in porcelain by the Japanese potter Hune about 1920. My thanks to all the potters over the centuries who have been inspired in some way to create the images that I've presented here to the Venice Clay artists and to other various websites.